this is lilac co-housing and this is a completely different approach to a development in a suburb it's an old school ground and it's been developed with energy efficient buildings they're panel straw bales and it's quite high density and it's just gorgeous it's a lovely way to settle people in a really environmentally conscious way living together and cooperating around the same ethics let's go and have a look I'm here with Joe Atkinson and Joe you've been here from the early days. Yeah that's right yeah I mean I was here uh, I got involved in the project in 2010 uh, so that's like three years before we completed uh, and then helped to bring the project to fruition and helped to manage the construction project and all the rest of it. Right so how big is the site? Okay so we've got three quarters of a hectare in total and we've got 50 people living on it so it's fairly dense but it's kind of suburban level density, really. Now, you say we, you had an mm -hmm. idea, you had a concept. Can you lay that out for me? Because this is pretty unusual. It's called LILAC, and that stands for Low Impact Living, Affordable Community. And that idea really came about, came about from a conversation, as a lot of these ideas do, you know. Um, and it was two couples who were sitting in a bedroom at a party on New Year's Eve in 2006, I think. And they were kind of saying, oh, you know, it'd be really nice to live somewhere in a community, somewhere that reflects our values, somewhere where we can bring our kids up that's a really nice place. And the idea just grew from there, really. They got people involved, people, you know, they would start talking about the idea um, to like-minded friends. They started getting involved and sort of promoting the idea and eventually the community just came together and, yeah, built this place. It doesn't look like straw bell because you built in pre-constructed panels. Yeah, that's right. A firm called ModCell who came up with this particular design and it's essentially these timber frames that are then stuffed with straw bale and it's lime render on the outside and lime plaster on the inside. Uh, very well insulated walls, airtight construction, so you've got these airtight tapes around the junctions between the walls and the ceiling and stuff. Triple glazing and then we've got mechanical ventilation with a heat recovery. So you're taking that stale warm air, pumping it out, passing that across a heat exchanger to preheat the incoming fresh air. So like, we're really holding on to that heat in the buildings, so in the winter they stay really warm. Well, no, they feel very cosy. Yeah. yeah. Um, and yeah, I've got spreadsheets of all my like, electricity bills and gas bills and stuff. Um, and so my home, it's only a one-bedroom apartment, which I guess that's part of the kind of eco-living. We don't all need to live in massive mansions mm -hmm. and living somewhere like this where we've got a common house and all the rest of it. I don't need to live in a big house because I've got all these shared assets that I can use as well. But my energy bills, um, so at the moment I'm paying around about, it's about £340 a year for all my gas and all my electricity. And that compares with the, the average British home is something like about £1,200 for the same, for a year of energy. So you're on a so, quarter? Yeah, between a quarter and a third, I think, yeah. So you have a common community area yeah. and you have a common laundry, yeah. common kitchen, meeting area, plus... You have gardens through the whole thing, and a lot of yeah. it's edible by the look of it. And then you yeah. have an edible area yeah. that people can grow their own food. That's right. Yeah. And the gardens here are really designed to have a mixture between a little, you know, a little bit of food, so we can yeah have nice fresh stuff. Biodiversity planting. I mean, Yorkshire is a very agricultural area, and modern agriculture, as you know, um, is basically it's like a factory system. Really bad for wildlife a lot of insect species and all the rest of it, need to have really biodiverse cities. So yeah, it's a real kind of wildlife friendly planting. And some of it, you know, it's just nice flowers that kind of make you feel happy and cheer the place up. It's a real mixture. You catch your own water off the roof? Yep. So that the water off the roof goes into water butts. Um, so that's, yeah, water for the gardens. And then when they're full, it overflows into, it's like a communal pond in the middle of the site. And that rises and falls and um, it, that discharges into the public drain but at a very reduced rate so when there's a very heavy rain event we're not contributing to flooding because we absorb a lot of it here and then release it very slowly so how did you fund this there's, there's right. a lot of infrastructure here yeah um, and we use this 
it's a, a kind of pioneering financial model called mutual home ownership. And what that means is the whole thing is owned by a cooperative. Technically, we don't own the house that we live in, but the cooperative owns it. And we all own shares in the co-op. It's a little bit like being our own landlord. The amount of shares we own in the co-op is related to partly our income and partly the size of the house that we live in. So if you're on a very big income, you can afford a lot more shares and you can afford a bigger house. You can finance a bigger place. If you're on a very high income, your house kind of gets more expensive. But what that means is that one of the other homes in the project gets cheaper because it's all balanced across the whole project. And that creates affordable housing for people on low incomes. So the money came from a mixture of our own capital that we had up front. Um, we, got, we got a bit of a grant from the government because we were building using a, an innovative material, using straw bale for the houses. And then we got a, a mortgage from a, an ethical lender for the rest. So are you fully occupied? Yeah, and got a waiting list as well. And a waiting list? Yeah. Slow In fact, to... we had to close the waiting list because <laughs> people aren't moving out. That's a good sign. Yeah, people like it here. So you've done a permaculture design certificate course? Yep. And that's all been part of the planning? Yeah. Involved? If someone was going to want to do this and they want to set out on this journey, what are the first steps I should make? Um, I'd say create a shared vision. It's really important that everyone, everyone feels that like they're part of it. But you really need to keep bringing people in and really involving them in a meaningful way. Every so often you need to then go back and check your vision. But it's that vision, it's that kind of, here's what we're going to do and here's what it's going to look like when it's finished. It attracts people. But then you've got to really make sure that they own it themselves as well. So, yeah, the Good vision. Advice. Well, there you go. Lilac co-housing. This is the future of inner city living. And that means many of us can be involved and we can all enjoy the journey. <laughs>